Did legislators once again pave over the issue of adequate funding for transportation? When the public is filling their gas tank, they're expecting that that 18 cents worth of gas tax is going to pay for the streets and roads. It's a user fee. Tonight on Arizona Week, a look at how funding for road building and patching potholes is falling short. Production of Arizona Week is made possible in parts by a grant from the Stonewall Foundation and by the members of Arizona Public Media. Thank you for your continued support. Once again, your moderator, Michael Chiha. Why can't we get potholes filled and other rough spots smoothed out of our streets and roads? After all, we're paying more than $1 billion a year in taxes for street and road building and repairs. To get us started digging into the dilemma, AZPM political correspondent Andrea Kelly joins me. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you, Michael. We're here to talk about the Arizona Highway User Revenue Fund, and it's made up of a number of components. Would you run down what those are for us? Sure. Um, the, the, most, the biggest component of it is the 18 cents per gallon that we, people who drive, people who buy gas, pay at the pump when we fill up. Then there's also a 26 cent per gallon tax that the people who, who run those gas stations, who sell the gasoline, pay when they sell gas to us. And then there's a couple of other taxes when you license and register your vehicle, and then also commercial trucks pay a tax when they are driving through the state. Now, Arizona's been charging a gas tax for a long time, since 1921. It implemented uh, a one cent a gallon gas tax and split the proceeds 75% to counties and 25% to the state to build roads and highways. And since then, the tax has grown, of course. And would you go over that a little bit for us? Sure. It's grown, and also the uses have changed over the years. One important note in the timeline of this tax is that in 1974, the state created the Highway User Revenue Fund. That's what we will all refer to as HERF. That's the acronym for that. That's when that was created and the fuel tax was set at eight cents a gallon again in 1974. And then it changed over the years and in 1990, it was set at 18 cents per gallon, at least the fuel tax that we pay, which is actually still how, how we pay at the pump today, 18 cents per gallon. And it, so it hasn't changed in more than 20 years. Uh, and then every year the state collects more than a billion dollars in this fund and has a formula set by law for how it's distributed. And we're showing viewers right now a chart that shows how that's been distributed over the last decade or so. About a little over a billion dollars in the year 2001. It peaked in 2007 at uh, almost 1.4 billion. And then the recession reduced gas uh, usage, reduced driving, uh, and other factors, including what we're calling the sweeps, which we'll ask you about in a second kicked in and it, it went down and has only gone up very marginally since then. What, what are these sweeps that everyone makes reference to? Well, these sweeps, and, and I'm glad you're using that word because that's what most people use, is uh, the state is taking money out of the Highway User Revenue Fund that should be going to the state and cities and counties to pay for transportation improvements, roads, potholes, things like that, and instead using it to fund other departments. The main one is the Department of Public Safety, so what we all know as Highway Patrol. That's one segment of the Department of Public Safety. So the money is being spent on other departments instead of just transportation. That's where the sweeps, sweeping the money out from the local jurisdictions and into the state budget. Nevertheless, the local jurisdictions get quite a bit of money from the HERF, and we're showing a chart now that demonstrates that for Pima County, for example, in the fiscal year 2011 last year, got 39 million. Tucson got about 43 million. It's based on population largely and other aspects to the formula, but mostly it's based on population. Isn't that right, Andrea? That's right. And because it's based on population, we can see that Maricopa County and Phoenix, the city of Phoenix, uh, take in the most amount of money from this. Phoenix with about one point. $105 million, and then Maricopa County has just short of $87 million. Sandwiched in between Pinal is Pinal County, sandwiched in between Pima and Maricopa counties, and uh, they are getting about $14.4 million from these HERF revenues. So it does depend on population. And this isn't a comprehensive list. Every state and local entity, every local entity, cities, towns, and counties gets money from uh, the HERF. So we've just shown a few of them here. 
Now, back to the sweeps, which have been onerous, according to local officials, and even state highway officials have said that. They've been going on for a long time. We have some figures here from the League of Arizona Cities and Towns that show it's been about $668 million total swept over the last decade or so. How does that break down for the counties and the cities? Well, we can see that the cities and counties are getting uh, just short of half of that just short of half of those sweeps are to the cities and counties. Um, cities and towns, $204 million that they've lost to these sweeps over the last decade or so, and counties, $127 million. Now, to get a sense of what that means and how much that money is, we uh, took a look at the Grant Road Widening Project, which is scheduled here in Tucson to happen in the next decade or so. It's a phased-in project, and that includes widening a four-lane road into six lanes, adding sidewalks and bike lanes, and doing a lot of improvements. That project itself is five miles long, and it costs $167 million. That's an estimate. Construction hasn't started yet. So you can see that in the last decade or so of sweeps from the cities and towns, you could do that whole project. Wow, that's amazing. And that's why we hear these complaints from cities, towns, and counties And we'll hear a little bit more of that on the program as we talk to some of those folks. One aspect of this in just the few seconds we have remaining is that the state was downgraded on its bond rating because of taking money away from the transportation fund. Uh, And that downgrade means that the state and local entities might have to pay more in interest rates when they borrow for road projects. Talk a little bit about that effect. The, the state or city or town bond rating is like an interest rate. That's how uh, the, the people who are buying bonds are setting those rates. And so when the money isn't there, when this money is taken away, those rates are going up. It's costing more to borrow money to do road projects. Andrea, thanks so much for that explanation of HERF. Local governments say they've been hit hard by transportation fund diversions. Here's Ken Strobeck of the League of Arizona Cities and Towns to give us the details. How are Arizona cities and towns doing at filling those potholes? It's a challenge. Um, Streets and roads are one of the basic essential services and and one that uh, certainly commands a lot of our municipal budgets and is very high priority for uh, for citizens. Uh, But it's been tough in the uh, downturn of the economy with local revenues going down as well as uh, sweeps of the HERF funds from the state. So I think the maintenance backlog, the improvements, uh, preservation, those kinds of things have uh, taken a back seat in many communities. What has the HERF sweep done to cities and towns in Arizona? Well, it's really created a lot of delay in what people can do with their uh, road maintenance program. It's a very complex system to be maintaining asphalt and and all the intersections and street lights and all those kinds of things. And so uh, municipalities, as well as the state, have a very uh, organized system for what they want to do and the maintenance schedules that they're on. And uh, in general, the response because of the HERF sweeps and, and because of declines in local revenues has just been to simply delay those things. It's not that they don't need to be done but uh, when there's no money to actually pay for them in this year, then you push them off another year, another two years, and then that leads to uh, increasing deterioration on the infrastructure. And in total, what have those sweeps cost the cities and towns in Arizona over the last decade or so? Over the last decade, just for the city and town portion of HERF uh, that should have come through the state, we've lost over $200 million uh, in in a 10-year period. And, of course, that's distributed primarily on a population basis, there's a little difference in the formula for cities over 300,000, but in general, it's a population distribution uh, for the cities and also for the counties in terms of how much gasoline sales are done. So uh, it's, it's been particularly hard in both uh, urban and rural areas of the state. And do you know what the figure is for the state budget that was just passed for the coming fiscal year? For this year, the uh, sweeps out of HERF are about $120 million, and that's going to um, DPS. And that, again, is a constitutional provision. Uh, The Constitution says that uh, administration of the highway system and enforcement can be uh, used with gasoline tax revenue, so that is a constitutional distribution. The, the $86 million that was transferred last year that went to the Motor Vehicles Department, we had some serious questions about whether that actually was a constitutional purpose, but fortunately this year that uh, money was not taken out of HERF, and so uh, we're not having to deal with that question this year. 
And how do you see the issue going forward? Do you expect these sweeps to continue? Do we need some other kind of adjustment to make sure they don't continue? I think there's only one uh, thing that the legislature hates more than uh, not having enough money, and that is raising taxes. And so I don't uh, foresee the day that they're going to say, well, we need more revenue, therefore let's increase taxes in order to pay for the things that we want. So I think there will always be a temptation to try to move funds from one account to another. And uh, when there's uh, constitutional permission to do so, I think that uh, they will likely uh, take advantage of that. And that puts more pressure on cities and towns, though, to consider whether they should raise taxes or readjust their priorities. Is that not correct? That's always correct. And, and you know, HERF is very critical to the uh, budgets of cities and towns when it comes to street maintenance. Now, not all cities and towns have 100% of their uh, budgets for the streets coming from HERF. A lot of them supplement that with their own general revenue, uh, and, and that's something that they decide on a city-by-city -city basis. So what is the general state of roads and streets in Arizona cities and towns? I think it's fair to say that it's um, tolerable for the moment, but I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the delay and the deference of maintenance uh, particularly is going to be uh, something that we're going to have to face in the future, and uh, we'll likely see uh, road conditions get worse before they get better. Uh, I just heard uh, a presentation from an ADOT representative uh, recently and he was saying that they would normally do one kind of a restoration where they would grind down the street and uh, replace the asphalt but because of funding they're not being able to do that. They have to do a, a chip seal or some other kind of interim step just to be able to preserve that surface for another year or two and, and then hopefully at the end of that period of time they'll be able to do the comprehensive repair. The conditions of roads and streets are obvious to everybody because we're out there all the time. So the prioritization of that, you mentioned it's a high priority for municipal governments. Where is it in the grander scheme of things ranks ahead of many things behind perhaps public safety? Yeah, I'd say in general it's in the top five or six uh, municipal issues when you talk about uh, you know basic utilities, water and, and sewer and, and garbage, those kinds of things, very high priority, but also transportation uh, of all kinds, but especially streets and roads is something that always shows up in surveys as, as being very, very important, not only to citizens, just to, to average uh, residents, but also to business. Uh, because they talk about being able to move their goods and services from location to location and then when they decide to to put a manufacturing facility or some other distribution facility in place um, how they can move their uh, their products is one of the important factors that they uh, consider there was a bill in the legislature this past session HB 2771 that would have made some fairly fundamental changes in the way HERF operates but it didn't get passed it didn't even get out of committee and you testified in favor of that bill. Tell us a little bit about what that would have done, and then going forward, is that the kind of thing we need to be looking at? I definitely think that's the kind of thing we need to be looking at, and, and that was a bill that was championed by Representative Vic Williams, who was chairman of the House Transportation Committee. This bill would have stopped the sweeps going forward, and at one point uh, there was even an, an attempt to try to repay some of the sweeps that had been taken in, the, in past years. Uh, I think given, a, again, our budget situation, that's very unlikely to happen, but uh, it's certainly something that I think uh, legislators need to be confronted with and realize when the public is filling their gas tank, they're expecting that that 18 cents worth of gas tax is going to pay for the streets and roads. It's a user fee, and uh, to have it be diverted to other uses uh, is really inappropriate. Taking it a step further to the street-level viewpoint, here's Assistant Pinal County Manager Greg Stanley, who oversees transportation projects and issues countywide. Pinal is the fastest growing county in Arizona over the last decade. How are you doing keeping up with road and street building? Well, I can, I can tell you um, the way we currently stand, we're not keeping up. Um, it's, it's been very difficult to, to build the infrastructure needed to support the population we have. As, as you mentioned, we're a fast growing county, but it's primarily a rural county that's situated between City of Tucson, City of Phoenix, and that's really what has generated our growth. Now, how do you do with road and street maintenance, taking care of what you already have? Well, one of the things we've done is in 2008 is really when we started to see HERF revenues decline as the economy went down and the price of gas went up. 
um, as, as the revenues started decreasing, what we did was we focused on making sure we took care of what we had. Um, we had to do some layoffs, and so we did reduce staff. But the focus was let's let's make sure we take care of our roads that we do have. So we've continued to spend money on pavement preservation, on the striping, and on the signing. And then our second big thing is to make sure they stay safe. So you know we want to make sure we're taking care of the edges of the road and the potholes and those kinds of things. We have not been able to expand our road capacity at all, essentially, since 2008. Now, one of the things we're hearing from everyone is that the HERF sweeps or the takeaways from the Highway User Revenue Fund are hurting local governments everywhere. What has the impact of that been here in Pinal County? It's been significant. It's been significant everywhere, I, and I think in rural Arizona more so than in the cities. Can you tell me what the dollar figure is for what Pinal County has gotten in HERF money in the last couple of years? Um, last year, HERF alone was a little over $14 million, um, and, and it's been pretty steady in that range for the last few years. Um, if you go back to 2006, 2007, we hit high points of $18 million back then, and, and then starting in 2008, as, um, as people drove less because of the price of gas, as well as the legislature started doing these HERF sweeps, uh, our revenues have gone down. So what would you estimate the HERF sweep losses have been for your county in the last couple of years? Oh, I know exactly. <laughs> uh, between 2009 and 2012, um, that, that totaled up to about $5.4 million. And I like to tell people that would be enough to fund uh, the first phase of what is the county's highest priority project. And that is? Our, our highest priority project is Hunt Highway. Uh, Hunt Highway serves as a principal arterial through the Santan Valley area of the county. It's up close to the Queen Creek area and connects essentially Florence to uh, Maricopa County. So it's one of those commuter routes that is needed because of the great population growth in the county. Yeah, that, the Santan Valley area is be, between the 2000-2010 census their growth was over 3,000 percent. So they, they're up to around 81,000 people at the last census, and the road network is not there to support them. Now, what other sources of funding do you have for transportation in Pinal County? The, there's a portion of the vehicle license tax that comes to us. That's uh, in Pinal County. That's a little over $4 million a year. Uh, this year, it's on track to be close to $5 million, I think. Um, the county assesses a half cent transportation tax, and so that's on and I've, everything people buy. Um, there's a half a percent, and that's dedicated to transportation in Pinal County that is shared with all of our cities. So it's it's allocated based on uh, percentage, uh, based on your population. So the HERF model is based largely on fuel tax. That's how it started and that's how it continues. Is that obsolete in this day and age of, of high-efficiency vehicles? I would say that the system's broken. Um, as cars have gotten more efficient, or even cars that now don't even use gasoline, we've got people using roads that essentially aren't paying for them. And, uh, of course, touchy subject as to what to do about it, but the, the gas taxes have not gone up, I think, on the federal level and state level. It's been since the 90s, and so it's, it's not tied to inflation. Uh, it's a, it's a per-gallon tax. I'm sure that's part of your program, but as a per-gallon tax, when cars get more efficient, actually revenues go down. So what's needed in the way of a funding mechanism for transportation that can work and progress with transportation needs as they get greater? Well, and, and some of this, of course, politicians have got, are going to have to deal with this. Um, but there are a number of studies underway. Um, in the state of Oregon, I know they're doing a, a study using where it's vehicle miles traveled. And I think they also tie it into congestion. So it's a, you go to the gas pump, there's something that reads uh, electronically, reads your car, where you've been since the last time you were in a gas pump, downloads that information and applies a tax based on how much you drove and where you drove and when you drove. And it, something like that, or just an, a flat odometer type tax. Or, you know, people have talked about a combination odometer and vehicle weight tax, because the heavier the vehicle, the more wear and tear they put on the roads. 
Here in Pinal County, you have the bedroom communities on the north end and the south end serving the two big metro areas, as you suggested. But most of the county is also, as you said, rural. What special issues are there for transportation in a county with so much rurality to it? And, that, and that's a big pull and push uh, that we have to deal with with our elected officials. Over 50% of our roads are still dirt. They're gravel roads, just slightly above 50%, but uh, a little over half of them are dirt. Um, you may have heard just in the last couple of days, the EPA has declared Pinal County in non-attainment for PM10, which is a measurement of dust in the air, and a lot of that's because of our agricultural areas. But one of the uh, outfalls of all of that is going to be a requirement that we go out and pave virtually all of our dirt roads. Uh, the estimates that we've had, we did some estimates a few years ago, but we estimated $120 million just to go put a, a chip seal coat on all of our dirt roads in the county. So massive effort. A bill introduced in this year's legislative session would have made the state accountable for HERF sweeps, but it didn't get far. To discuss what happened and what can be done going forward, that bill's sponsor, State Representative Vic Williams, joins me. He's a Republican from Tucson and chair of the House Transportation Committee. Welcome. Michael, thank you very much for having me here. And unfortunately, HB 2271, which we dubbed Arizona State Highway IOU bill, was not able to get a full hearing in the House of Representatives. Uh, the Speaker of the House did allow an informational hearing. It was widely attended. We had about 150 people in the room to discuss the impacts on her, f and, or say the lack of her funding in the state of Arizona and how the legislature has been sweeping this consistently for the last 12 years. So the accountability factor there was what was important to you in this regard, is that correct? Well, the philosophical undertone was more than just the HERF sweeps for highway funding. It was about accountability at the governmental level, be it Democrat or Republican, where you're seeing both political parties, when they have control of the legislative process, they will sweep from one pot of money into some other type of uh, agency. And that's a lack of fiscal accountability. It's a lack of fiscal discipline. In my opinion, that is what drives these negative numbers that you see on all legislative bodies here in the state of Arizona, throughout the United States, and the other uh, states around the union, and as well our federal government. So we get accountability. We know how much has been swept for whatever purposes away from transportation funding. What's next? What's the reality about whether any of that gets paid back or what happens there? Well, once again, this bill, what it was to do was to, one, uh, chronicle the amount of sweeps, which are now at a, at a, in a range of about $1.4 billion over the last 12 years from our state highway fund. So if you've run over a pothole recently, that might be one of the contributing factors. To, one, have a ledger of those dollars and then also determine or also dictate if there are any future sweeps that would go onto this ledger and need to be repaid to the state general fund at some point in time, or pardon me, back to the uh, HERF fund at some future date when there are excess funds in the legislature. Now, one thing that we've been hearing uh, in reporting this story this week is that the, a gasoline tax-based fund uh, is kind of outmoded or obsolete based on what's going on with fuel efficiencies and uh, alternative fuels. What do you say about that? Well, yeah, I would say, but let me extrapolate and build upon that comment. Currently, the state of Arizona, we collect 18 cents per gallon. And we know that there's been a ba basically a constant source of revenue for about $1.2 billion per year. However, with the efficiencies in automobiles that we're now seeing, we're not getting an increase in revenue coming into the state. And at some point in time, we're going to have to find other ways of funding our highway system. But first, before we look at other measures of funding, we have to stop the bleeding. We have to stop both Democrats and Republicans alike going into the state highway fund and using it as their slush fund to balance whatever programs that they want to push. Once we do that, I think what the, the measure needs to be coming into the future is one, it's about miles traveled on our state highway system into the weight of the vehicle. Some combination and formulate condition based on that should dictate how much people are paying into the system. So what's the impact if nothing changes with that? Because that's quite a bit of reform to change the way the system would work, even based on what your bill would have done. Right. And, and once again, look, we have to take 
minor steps, baby steps moving forward to ultimately correct this. We have to stop the legislature from sweeping these funds. Now, I hope that the voters of Arizona will take some action in controlling the legislature in the future from doing these funds. Obviously, the appetite for the people who control the legislature now and those who controlled the legislature a few years back are unwilling to take substantial reform and find fiscal accountability for the voters of Arizona. Do you think it'll get to the point where local governments will just have to take on transportation funding in a more uh, complete way for themselves and not be so reliant on state money? I'm fortunate enough to, to represent Oro Valley and Marana. Both of them have been able to fund and maintain their highways appropriately, one by receiving the HERF dollars, two by having some of their general funds. But you take a look at what's going on in the city of Tucson, an absolute failure in able to keep their, their, their surface streets paved and maintained in a reasonable measure. So it's difficult to say how that's going to work at each municipality because they, they all have their own unique circumstances and, say, their own political agendas and priorities. But I can say this, that transportation needs to become a greater priority for local governments in southern Arizona. We're getting to a point of critical, a critical stage where we're no longer going to be able to maintain or maintenance some of these roads that are deteriorating or are going to get into a state where they're going to need to be completely refurbished or, uh, say, torn up and redone. And that's going to be an economic disaster for the region. And as well, if we don't do this, and it's already starting at some level, it's starting to strangle out our economy. It's about economy. It's about quality of life. And these are issues that I hope that we can start focusing on at a regional level with more intensity than has been given in the past. Would you tell me if you think that transportation should pay for itself. In other words, should the gasoline tax or whatever other tax on use of the roads, should that pay for itself or should there be general fund subsidies, if you will? Well, at the local level, yes. At towns and cities, they may need some type of subsidy. Or, but once again, that's the flavor of the local municipality. At a state level, we need to find additional revenue sources. But first, we have to protect the existing money so we can uh, uh, move forward from there. Representative Vic Williams, Republican from Tucson, chair of the House Transportation Committee, thanks so much for speaking with me. Michael, thank you for having me. My pleasure. That's our program for Friday, May 25th, 2012. My full interviews with Ken Strobeck and Greg Stanley are on our website, azweek.com, along with the charts and graphics you saw on the program tonight. For Arizona Week, I'm Michael Chihak. Production of Arizona Week is made possible in parts by a grant from the Stonewall Foundation and by the members of Arizona Public Media. Thank you for your continued support.